this is RPCV and career coach Jody Hammer, back with you talking more about winning interview strategies. In this segment, I'll talk about how to maintain your composure the day of the interview and how to best answer even the most difficult of interview questions. The second category, the day of. So these are the interview tips, the day of everything. So first of all, obviously dealing with nerves. That's totally normal. So I talk a lot about palming tactics, right? Deep breathing, right? Taking those, closing your eyes, taking a deep breath in and then holding it for a few seconds and then breathing out. Doing that a couple times even can really ground you and it can just bring things down to a level where you don't feel frazzled, okay? So that can be really very helpful. The other thing I wanna talk about are power poses. This is one of my biggest tips I give people as well. And what I mean by power poses is if you are to get up, if you stand up, you, you uh, spread your legs open, right? Your, your feet open, hands on your hips, chest out, breathe in deeply and breathe out. This is like the Superman or Superwoman pose, right? That has been proven, research has shown that that has been proven doing that beforehand. And no, you're not going to do the, that inside the office of the company you're interviewing for, right? Of course, in the lobby, you're going to go into some, you know, arrive early, go into the bathroom next door at, you know, the coffee shop or whatever. It's a pretty, it's a pretty powerful thing to do and it's super easy. So doing that. Um, but the other thing that I talk to people a lot about is, Remember, an interview is just a conversation, albeit a very important conversation, especially if it's your dream job, but it's a two-way conversation and it's an opportunity for the employer to kind of feel you out to see if you might be a good fit, but it's also an opportunity for you to assess the employer and to feel them out and determine if you think this is a good fit. Now, the other thing on the day of the interview is first impressions. We've got to talk about first impressions. You, I love, there's an old saying, you never get a second chance to make a first impression, okay? And by that, I, it, it's first impressions are, I mean, they're, they're powerful too, right? So there's, there's a concept of the 7-Eleven rule for uh, first impressions, basically saying that 11 different decisions or judgments are made about you within the first seven seconds of interaction. Wow. That's a little pressure, right? But it's, and it's very hard to change those. It's much, it takes much longer to change an initial impression. Um, than to create it. So you want to make sure that from the get-go, you are professional, you are, you know, kind, your body language matters. You know, I talk a lot about exuding warmth, um, smile, you know, with your eyes. Um, and, and just importantly, it's, you know, what you say, right? So you want to give a strong handshake, but not bone breaking, of course. But those kinds of things are going to, to set you down the right track before you even start with answering questions. So it's, it's really important. And lastly, under this category, what I wanna cover is treating everyone, all who you interact with, with the utmost respect. And that goes from the receptionist at the front of maybe the lobby, the, the, the organization, to the CEO that you might be interviewing with. You want to leave an excellent professional impression with any of them. Let's move into some of the tips for answering some of the common questions. So. Tell me about yourself, right, is I would say the most common question. You, you need to practice for that one because it's almost always asked, right? Some version of it, it might be, tell me about your experience and why you're interested in this position, something, something like that. But it's, it's basically your opportunity to talk about yourself, to frame yourself as um, related to this job. You want to be somewhat brief. I mean, most interview questions, you're not going to want to go over. I mean, three minutes is adequate to tell a story typically and, you know, set up, you know, everything. So, but, but I pay less attention to the exact 
uh, length than how engaging you are when you're telling it. But obviously read people as well. If you're discussing something and it's, you know, you're, you're feeling like you're losing people, you know, make it more brief, you know, do, you know, uh, react accordingly, right? So um, what, you, what you want to share there is, as I said, was, you know, your skills, your experience as related to that position, right? And um, so you don't want to, you can't give your whole bio, right? I was born in the Midwest and lived there till the age of eight and then relocated. No, it's really more about you and, and uh, but you and your professional, what your background is, maybe, you know, how you, how you, you know, envision yourself. What is your, you know, how many years of experience do you have in program design or whatever it is that, you know, you're interviewing, you know, with, right? But the biggest tip that I give on, answering this question, tell me about yourself, is even if they don't ask, always end with, and that's why I'm so interested in this opportunity. It seems a perfect, and, and then go on to say something like, it seems a perfect opportunity for me to bring my XYZ skills and contribute to da, 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 something. So um, that is going to cinch Oftentimes it's like, wow, they're really interested in this, right? And, and you can say it in the way that you want to. And, you know, and that's what really draws me to this position. It would allow me to bring X, Y, Z, whatever your skills that you want to, you know, like highlight. And, you know, while contributing to a cause that I'm deeply passionate about as proven through my own Peace Corps service or whatever it is. So, so really um, ending it with that, regardless of whether or not they ask. The question that most dread, I, you know, I, I'm, if you think about which question do I dread the most in interviewing, what's the question that I'm most uh, worried about answering? Generally, that's the weakness question. So tell us about a weakness or failure. It could be, they could phrase it as a failure of yours. The other, but the biggest tip that I give other than that, the biggest tip for what to do is to share an unrelated weakness. So don't choose a weakness that's related directly to this job and excellent performance in this job, right? You're gonna choose an unrelated weakness, couch it in the past, show what you've done to work on that when you identified it and how you've made progress. First, I do want to uh, share about the question when people ask you what you're looking for in a salary. A lot of times they won't have the salary listed in a job description, right? Um, especially non, non-federal, for example, they won't uh, oftentimes. And when you, what I would say is avoid giving specifics before you receive that tentative offer or before you know that they are really interested in you. Because let's face it, that's where you're going to have more leverage on getting what you want in a salary. If you come out of the gate right away, you know, in, in, in the first interview and you say an, uh, an amount that's higher and there's somebody else that's, you know, great as well. And they're really just deciding between the two, that could be the factor. And you don't want that. You want them to choose you and then really make that case. They're, they're more committed to you as of then. So one thing that I recommend, this is just an example of how you might reply to that. If they say, you know, what are you looking for in a salary or something like that? to reply gen in general, right? So you might say something like, I'm looking for a salary that's commensurate with my five years of program design experience and my proven XYZ skill um, that I bring to the table. I'd be happy to chat a little more about specifics upon learning the projected range um, for the position and other ancillary benefits. Let's, so the behavioral questions is really what I want to spend a little more time on here uh, today because they are so important. They are the most common type of question that's asked. They require more than behavioral questions require more than just a yes or no, right? You need to prove it. And so my, you know, my hot tip is to use what, what's called, this is very well regarded in the field, STAR method, right? So situation, task, action, and result is what it stands for, right? So describe the situation very briefly, setting the context. What was the task or the challenge? What did you have to do, right? What was needed, right, to, to impact this? Action, what did you do? What was the, who did you work with to do it? What did you do? And the results, what was the outcome? The so what? What happened? How many people did you 
did you educate on this? What percentage did the reading level increase by? All of those kinds of, you know, those numbers, numbers pop. So when you can incorporate that in and use that STAR methodology, it can really help prove your competency in, in what they're um, saying. So, so examples of this might be, you know, um, give me an example of your ability to excel independently with limited guidance, right? Boy, RPCVs, you have lots of experience in that because you did a lot of what you did on your own and coordinating others to get involved, but really, really doing that. Please share about a time you dealt with the conflict in a team environment. That's a big one as well, right? Conflict. And, you know, when you get a question like that with, you know, conflict or something, you know, you, you, you know, um, you, you can acknowledge, you know, you know, I'm, I really pride myself on my ability to, you know, interact effectively with, you know, different populations. And, you know, that said in any environment on occasion, there will be a, a maybe a conflict of sorts. And so let me tell you about one. When I was, and then you go into what it was, what you did, how you handled it, and the outcome, right? You do the STAR methodology, and you do a great job. Uh, tell me about a time you failed. That's a good behavioral question that people are oftentimes not, um, not comfortable with because it's like failure. No, I'm supposed to talk about all of my successes, and I'm supposed to downplay my failure, right? Well, employers know today failure is a fact of life. And if you truly say, well, I've never failed, I don't think you're being genuine. I don't think you're being, you're being honest because everyone's failed in some way, right? And uh, quite honestly, and this is how you might even, you know, you might even, you know, start your, your response is, you know, honestly, I, I think failure is one of the best learning lessons for us as humans. And, you know, I've learned a great deal from, from failure. Let me give you an example and, and go into that, right? Um, and, and, you know, you, you, Right. You, you, you indicate that it's, you know, a, a part of the human condition. And, you know, when I first joined Peace Corps, I and you could give an, a time an example of a time that you failed because we all failed in Peace Corps, too. Right. Probably especially in those first three months where Peace Corps tells you don't do any projects, just get to know the people. And yet you're so eager and gung ho. Oh, this is a great one, though. And this needs to be done. And you jump into it and it fails. Um, so you have, you have, uh, stuff that you can, can, can talk about. Now you don't want to say, oh, I have a wealth of failure, uh, that might give another impression, but, uh, that's great. So, so the, the behavioral questions are, are key and, and proving them with the star methodology is really going to help. So, um, I would say along the same lines with, uh, behavioral questions, right? My best tip, my, this is my signature response, my signature tip is preface your responses to the questions. My number one tip. So what do I mean by that? Well, I mean, set the context or and or the depth of your experience in maybe this area or this skill set. The bonus of prefacing your response is that it gives you a few milliseconds extra time to be thinking about what that exact answer you're going to share is instead of the five seconds, which is okay. You can take some seconds, but if you're taking even five seconds on, a, on an interview, can tape yourself and do a five second pause. It's a pretty, uh, as they call pregnant pause. It's a noticeable pause, but you certainly can do that some if you need to. But you, if you preface your responses, you're kind of setting up the scene for it while you're finalizing the exact scenario you're going to share. And it just is very fluid. So, so by that, I mean, um, you know, if, when, when you preface and you set the context and you, you share, you might say, for example, if they ask you about, you know, leveraging, you know, diverse communities is maybe what they ask the question about. And you might, you know, respond, your preface might be, Sure, I have two years of direct experience in leveraging diverse communities around a common cause. For example, in my Peace Corps service, I was tasked with bringing together three small villages to da, 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 and then you go into what it was, right? Um, that preface, I have two years of direct experience in leveraging, right? Or I've proven my strong organizational skills in each of my past three jobs. One example would be da, 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 da. The advantage of prefacing is that it also allows you more grace, uh, more, it allows them to have more grace if they don't like your specific example that you shared. 
they're thinking, oh, well, she has three years of experience in this versus if you just jump in. When I was in Peace Corps, I did this, da, 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 and you don't preface it, right? That's um, That can really be helpful. So I've found that's a, that's a really um, strong tip and one that I think has made a lot of difference to people from, from what I've heard in the, in the feedback and such. And you can swap up the lead into that. You, what you don't want to say, you don't want it to sound scripted. So you don't want to every time say, I have five years of da, 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 da. I have two years experience. It, like for the next question, you can prove it up. Like I said, I've proven my XYZ skills in, you know, each of my past jobs. Another way to say it is you might say, you know, I'm really proud of my proven commitment to an ability to da, 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 for example, and then you go into that. So it's all about prefacing folks. So I, I hope you like that tip. And that leads us to closing the interview. What, what do you do? Um, what, what questions do you bring? We talked already about the bringing a prepared list of, you know, five plus questions, you know, thoughtful questions to ask the employer, right? Um, so that if they answer some of them in the, in the, in the interview, you, you still will have some there. Um, but likely it's more like two or three, as I, as I said. But a couple of the sample questions, um, additional ones might be, you know, how would you describe the organizational culture of this particular team within whatever organization, maybe it's a big organization and you kind of want to know a little more sense of, you know, what the organizational culture is that can be really valuable information, right? Um, what's the biggest challenge facing the department or the team that I could jump in and contribute toward uh, you know, solving or addressing, right? That's showing that you're eager, you're ready to jump in and help in whatever way to, to meet their challenges and solve them. Um, those are some, you know, really good examples of, of questions. But my signature question in this, this is the tip that I give the most to people interviewing, right? Other than the prefacing in regard to the questions is my concerns question. So listen to it first. And, and try to resist the, 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 the tendency to gasp at first, thinking no way I would ask that and, and listen to my logic of it. So if, if it's gone fairly well, I mean, you know, you don't want to use this if it's been a disaster, obviously, it's just going to open up a can of worms. But if, you know, you've gotten to the end and it seems like it's gone, okay, ask, and, and this is very important, the how to ask this, I would say as well. So, so I, I generally phrase it as, now that you've had a chance to review my resume and visit with me in person or online, what, if any, concerns do you have about my candidacy? Very important, about my candidacy, not about me. Okay, what, if any, concerns do you have about my candidacy? And you never ask this unless you're committed to answering regardless of what they say. I will tell you from experience, Many times they will be caught off guard. It puts them in the situation of the, the roles are changed and uh, uh, I don't know, people aren't comfortable talking about concerns, right? So they might just spit out something like, uh, uh, nothing, great, you're great, something like that, to which you reply and say, well, excellent. I'm really glad to hear that as I'm extremely interested in this opportunity and would welcome the chance to bring my debt, 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 whatever, to this, you know, I'll look forward to, to hearing regarding next steps. So absolutely, you could say that, right? Now, what if they have a concern? There's two kinds. If they have a concern and then and they bring it out, if you either, you either, it's maybe you have the experience in it, but maybe you didn't show it on your resume. So you could say, you would always start with, if they have any concern, you're going to start your response with, thank you for your concern. I appreciate you sharing that that you want them to know that you're open to answering these kinds of things, right? You're forthright. So thank you for your concern. I appreciate you sharing that with me. I actually do have quite a bit of experience in, you know, wickety wiki, whatever, da, 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 da program. Um, I, you know, didn't perhaps put it on my resume as much, but when I was working in, da, 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 and then you, you, you say what it is, maybe it's just something that you left off your resume. Um, and that's fine. That's great. But what if, and this is the this is the one that people don't like is what if it is a valid concern you don't have the experience in something right so for example if if they if you ask that question and they responded with you know I didn't see um, any I didn't see experience in wickety wickety and that's one of the software programs we're really hoping to you know utilize in this uh, position 
So you would first respond and say, thank you for your concern. I appreciate you sharing that with me. I'd like to reassure you that uh, I, you know, or although I do not have extensive experience in wickety wickety software, I have proven my ability to master diverse software very quickly. For example, when I was at da, 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 I, and so I'd be happy to take a self tutorial and come up to speed in no time. You're addressing the concern, check, check box, no longer concern, right? because many times they have the list of questions they can ask and it has to be the same to everyone. So the only time you can get them to ask other questions, you know, like in concerns, things like that, is with the questions you have for them when they answer. And then of course, in the end, you know, when they, when they say any other questions and you reply, no, you know, I think, I, I think this, you know, really addresses it by now. If I do have additional questions, may I reach out to you directly? And what would be the best email for that? If you don't already have it, right? That way you get their email for the thank you note, which is key. By following these simple tips and techniques, you can shine in answering interview questions and increase your likelihood of being chosen for the job. Next up, part three, post-interview actions and follow-up you can take to help turn that interview into an offer.